Hey, you guys. Happy Thursday. Um, I was talking to my friend, a really good friend of mine, who I always call the infamous Lady D. And she gave me permission to share um, something that she came up with um, as um, a, like during a conversation that we were having about narcissistic abuse, right? Uh, so to piggyback off our conversation... Um, narcissists, they actually have these really terrible traits that come off as good ones in the beginning. Um, and usually you don't find out what they are until like later on in hindsight where you're like, oh, oh, like what? That really meant this, right? So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, about, about good traits, seemingly good traits that are actually really terrible. Um, my ex, okay, my ex, my, my narc ex-husband, um, when we first met, even though he spoke to me, um, he didn't really publicly, excuse me, talk to anyone. Not while he was around me and we were together all the time, right? But if we were in an elevator, if we were at a bar, if we were just out and about, no matter where we were, he... He never did this too much. And I and I actually kind of liked that. I actually really liked that he didn't talk too much in public. I liked it because it, in my mind, was some sort of reassurance that he more than likely would be a loyal individual and not a cheater. Because in order to cheat, you would, you would at least have to be able to strike up a small conversation. And from what I was looking at, it looked like... He couldn't or or just wasn't into doing even that, right? And you can say, well, how did he get you? Um, just being passing by the library, you know what I mean? And and having that tiny conversation. So I I could have and should have thought, uh, which I'm not gonna beat myself up about, if he struck up that small, tiny conversation with me on the fly, then obviously he can do that with other people. But that's not how I saw his silence. I saw his silence as being reserved and loyal and really cool and uh didn't need a, a bunch of attention and i really liked it right that in the end is not what that was that same reserved attitude that he had that i really really liked and thought and and looked at and read as being reserved and chill and uh, not attention seeking was really, he didn't want to open his mouth because too many damn skeletons would have fell out that bitch. Okay? His closet was too full. If you if he was to open the doors of his mouth too wide, a cemetery would have fell out that bitch. And I'm not talking about like your local cemetery, baby. I'm talking about like uh, Gettysburg would have fell out that bitch. Okay? So he, because if he were to talk too much like anybody, if anybody were to talk too much, eventually they're going to end up slipping and saying some shit that they're not supposed to say. So he never did that. And I didn't read it as that. I read it as just a really nice trait. But really, in hindsight, what he was doing when he was around uh, other friends of mine or something, what he was doing when we were out in public, because I'm bubbly, I'd be like, hi, you know, what, what he was doing by not speaking was he was, he was as narcissists do, he was really reading the room silently as one should stay silent if they're going to read the room and, and assess in his own mind while everyone's doing all of that yapping, right? He was really reading the room to see like, hmm, I wonder if I could, uh, I wonder if I could fuck her into a new car. Hmm. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if, I wonder if I could blow that guy and, um, cause you know, they just sleep with whatever male, female, dog, squirrel, whatever. I wonder if I could blow that guy and maybe get like a better apartment than this one that my wife has. Huh? Hmm. Let me, let me smell their weaknesses. He was really like a, like a truffle pig hunting truffles beneath the ground and the surface of things. Um, and instead of hunting truffles, like a truffle pig, he was just a pig-minded 
piece of trash who was hunting human spiritual qualities. And I think as I was like, um, you know, uh, gushing over the fact that he, my, my husband is, is not someone that he never openly looked at people on the street while we were together. He didn't do the, huh, huh, you know, when a pretty woman walked by probably cause he was probably looking at dudes. So there's that, but he also slept with women too, but like he didn't openly do his dirt. And it appeared that he was a good person. And it appeared that he was a reserved person. So uh, here's another one for you. Um, with my mother, who I believe is a covert female narc, um, I think that her and my father were two narcissists that, that got together and clashed. With my mother, I remember being young, um, even from seven until the end... Of, until the end of high school, from the from first grade to 12, from 1 to 12, I remember her just letting me ride my scooter up and down the alley, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an 80s baby. I'm born in 83, so a lot of our 80s baby, if you're 80s baby, sorry, your, our parents didn't like really clock us like that, but it's different. Um, to be a little girl, maybe in a dress, like going up and down the alley where I'm not able to be seen in front of the house. She never looked out the window and she never, she never said anything about it. And I was like, oh, when I was in junior high, I would be like, I would call her at random and be like, Hey mom, don't pick me up from school today because I'm going to stay the night at my, uh, my friend Alex's house. Alex is a dude. And she's like, Okay. I don't know if y'all can hear that siren in the background, but for those of you who have been on this channel for a while, you know what I mean and you know what I would say when you hear this siren, I'm making a good point, right? Count it as validation. But anyway, because it's really on fire. This point's on fire. I thought, wow, my mom's so liberal. She doesn't, she doesn't think that I'm a bad girl and, and she doesn't mind if I stay at my guy friend's house that she's never met in her entire life and she doesn't even know where, what neighborhood or anything, or what kind of parents or family this person has, or if we're in drugs or not. She doesn't mind. She's just so, she's so um, trusting and liberal that I can go just call her on a whim and she'll let me just go be my artist self, right? No, that's not what that was. Let me go further. Um, there's times where, um, there's one time my mother bought a car for me, right? She bought a car for me after I had my son. This was in 2009, all right? And I thought that it was because she cared about me. But then later, fast forward down the road, when I lost that car to an accident um, in like 2000 and like, I don't know, 20 something, um, I told her that my dad had offered to give me uh, another car as long as I could pay the insurance. And that's when she came out and said, oh, yeah, he always did want to buy you your first car. Oh, man. So, shit. What did we just learn, family? We just learned that she didn't ever want to buy me a car. She only did that shit, which looked good in my book until I learned why she did it. She only bought me the car to one-up my dad. Just to piss him off by being like, ha ha, I got to it first because I know you really wanted to do this for our daughter. So I'm going to do it first and rub it in your face. And I know that you're not going to be able to look good if you tell our daughter the truth that you always wanted to do this first. So ha ha, right? Right. And why wasn't it a problem for me to go spend the night at random or just not come home? I didn't come home back to back to back to back to back growing up. I literally lived with random families growing up, not because I was homeless. I just randomly would just jump ship and like just go live with other families that had a better structure, honestly, right? I lived with Italians. I lived with Irish people. I lived with Germans. I lived with, <clears throat> uh, oh, Brazilians. I grew, I have so many different people's families that I live with. Do you think my mother ever called and gave a fuck? No. Why? Why didn't she clock that? Why didn't she say anything about me randomly spending the night at other people's houses that she never knew that, that had, that, that were dudes and shit like that? 
it wasn't her being liberal because she cared about me being an artist. She didn't give a fuck. Right? So all those little traits that you think that your mom or dad had, and maybe your parents aren't narcissists, and I hope they weren't, but mine's are, right? And all those little things that your ex did or didn't do that you counted as being really, really, like, noble were really not that. They didn't show interest because they didn't give a fuck. And in hindsight, my ex actually does talk to a lot of people. He didn't in front of me, but he actually does talk to everybody because he's fucking everybody. He fucked so many people. He fucked my neighborhood. Literally. He literally fucked my actual neighborhood. And I'm in D.C. I'm in a, a major city. To literally be able to actually fuck somebody's entire neighborhood, you doing a lot of this before you doing a lot of sticking, right? So that same quality that I thought he had by being silent was literally just him reading the fucking room so he could pick more victims. Anyway, um, this was a longer video than normal, I guess, but uh, that's just piggybacking off of me and my friend Lady D. Um, where she said the narcissist has all these terrible traits that they literally, that they're literally able to pull off as being good ones. And not because they're trying to make you think they're good ones. It's just us not being a narcissistic person. You read those things as being great traits when you then later on find out, well, no, um, Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't cleaning up the highway to do community service by getting all those dead animals off the road. He was fucking really taking them back and shitting on them and being weird and melting them down, being prepared to eat and kill human beings. But from an outsider's perspective, what a nice young man. He's just cleaning up the road. That's so sweet. We need more young men like you, don't we, Jeffrey? And really, he's like, nah, you have no idea, bitch, what I'm doing with these animals. Same way that we have no idea, bitch, what the narcissist is doing with us. Love y'all. Okay, bye.